way that we look at or have looked at building or starting up a, a farm from an area that hasn't been in production uh, we kind of look at it as a uh, triangle uh, let's say or we look at it as a pyramid was a better a better way to put it but uh, at the base of that pyramid uh, we we have to we have to start with the, the the most important thing because without this base and the base is uh, the the soil without the soil being in the proper condition none of the rest of the things that we're going to do here is going to matter it doesn't matter what kind of seed or chemicals or fertilizer we use if we don't get the soil in the right basic condition before we even start. So the first part of that on the soil, there's really two parts. There's of course the soil preparation and I'll get into that in a little bit, but right now I want to talk about uh, the soil testing and the analysis of the soil because this is something that can start uh, before you even get the soil all torn up and prepared if we're talking about a pasture or if we're talking about an area that even has um, trees or something else on it and you're going to remove that you can actually go ahead and start the process of pulling the soil samples or uh, taking soil samples pulling them is a word that we use in the agriculture field but taking the soil samples and getting those uh, prepared and sent off to a lab that can take some time depending on where you're at uh, even here in the states this can be a delay because these things get backed up during the busy time so doing this in advance of uh, maybe even starting on the conversion of the soil is a good idea. Basically in terms of how many samples do you want to take, uh, you know the, the rule of thumb is you know the more the better basically but um, here in the states we tend to sample down to about a one acre level. Uh, in Brazil we pull considerably less than that. You're gonna have to decide what's really cost effective but I'll just say that this is a critical factor so even if you can only pull one or two or three for your whole farm your whole field not your whole farm let's say but your whole field uh, then you should do that and if, if and get that off so you can at least get a baseline idea of what your field is the main thing that we're going to be looking for here on this first sample is going to be the um, the pH of the soil because if the soil pH is extremely out of whack it usually it's going to be very acidic very low numbers but it can also get alkaline soils in very high numbers but if we don't have a pH in the five and above range it's going to be a hard to raise very good soybeans and if if we don't have a a pH if we have a pH in the three to four range we're probably not going to raise any soybeans we're actually going to waste our money and our time trying to do anything I've seen this happen in Brazil uh, many times people don't do this first step correctly and then they go ahead and think if they apply enough fertilizer uh, plant the right seed etc etc and it really is a waste of time you're not going to have a crop so at very very low pH levels uh, you have um, typically in Brazil anyway we have aluminum toxicity the aluminum levels in the soil are just so high that uh, soybeans won't grow so it's a very very critical factor and I can't stress it enough and that's why it's at the base of this pyramid we we get these soil samples pulled and we see what the pH is and assuming that this pH is probably not in the correct range I mean it's sometimes it may be but typically it's not going to be typically it's going to be too low and then you're going to have to use uh, something like a lime product to try to correct that uh, well, you're going to have to go with whatever the product is in your region uh, and uh, and you're going to have to, um, the, the amount that you apply is going to be determined by an agronomist. There's a lot of differences in lime. Um, lime can be anything from a liquid product to a product that's uh, very coarse, uh, almost that you would be applying to a, a road almost. Uh, so obviously the product that's extremely coarse, that product is not going to, it's going to take years to break down uh, and will will provide benefits to the soil for many many years but will not provide many benefits to your your soil right away on the other hand a liquid product um, we use we've been using that here in the states now they they actually have products that come out of the cities where they do their water trace uh, their waste treatment and there's leftover liquid lime product uh, 
that uh, we can apply at about the same cost levels as a regular lime and that product is ex available extremely quickly your next crop you're going to get a, a, a great deal a large percentage of that product product is going to be available to do the corrections in your soil and if you don't if you don't apply this lime until just uh, right at the same time you plant or just before you plant and you don't give it time to make the have some effect on the soil your what's going to happen is your when your soybean plants if that's what you're producing try to try to grow the root growth will be really stunted because the soil is just not going to be corrected enough so it's important to try to get that product applied uh, two to three months in front of your planting and those two to three months need to have rainfall if it's in an area where you have a dry season like we do in Brazil you apply that in the middle of the dry season and nothing's gonna happen until the rain starts so the clock really doesn't start ticking until you start getting those rains uh, typically in Brazil what we do is we go ahead and uh, we work the soil perhaps one time sometimes maybe twice but usually once just to get uh, to get the, the, the whatever's on the surface taken off and mixed in one time and then we do a lime application and then we do one or more sometimes two or three more uh, passes with large heavy disc that's how we do it in Brazil uh, to try to mix the soil basically what you're trying to do is you're once you determine what you need to apply to this soil in terms of the amount of the light lime calcium uh, you you're wanting to get that applied and then to get that product uh, mixed into the soil tip tip uh, f as deeply as possible if you can get it into the full like into a 10 to 14 inch pro soil profile the top 10 to 14 inches of the soil profile that'd be ideal uh, if you only get into the top inch um, it's not going to be ideal because you're again when your roots hit that deeper soils they're gonna they're gonna have a really tough time surviving in that area we actually in Brazil uh, in the last couple years down there had used uh, liquid lime in addition to the lime corrections that we've done we've got an injector that shoots a, a little bit of liquid lime right into the um, uh, right into the soil zone so how often do you want to do this well uh, you know the first the, the initial one is the most important one you need to get that initial sample pulled and get this correction done uh, on new soils uh, we would come back and probably sample it the next year again and sometimes we have to come back with a little additional lime because you you don't get it corrected fully with that first application uh, again you know, backing up on that first application if it requires a great deal of lime um, like in the terms of three to four tons per hectare or more uh, then we would probably do multiple applications we would put half down mix it in and then put another half down and, and mix that in because it's tough to get that much lime put on and get it mixed in correctly if it's a really fine lime product which is what we use in Brazil it's almost like a powder uh, you have to watch the dust you know you can lose a lot of your product blowing so you have to be careful you know not to apply it on really really windy days or you may be uh, applying more lime to your neighbors fields than you are to your own it can be difficult when you're pulling these samples when you're taking soil samples on a field that hasn't been uh, torn up yet it can be extremely hard uh, and and there's not a lot of good solutions to that you just have to try to find some tools that will allow you to somehow dig into that soil and again you want to try to get down 12 14 inches with your sample and then mix that soil up so that you really get an idea of not just on the surface what the soil is but uh, what the, the levels are but the, the, the whole soil profile there where the roots are going to be growing watch for any when you take your samples you have to be careful and watch for any really unusual areas obviously if a if a, a cow has happened to walk along or some animal and you know defecated in that area then you don't want to do anything right under that area because that's going to give you some erroneous results uh, or if it's a, a just an unusual area with more rocks or or uh, maybe a sandy area if it's a very small area and doesn't represent the whole field and you're only pulling a few samples you want to try to work only in the areas that are more typical of the whole field